Tell me if this sounds like you. You hear about a really cool new CSS feature like nesting, you go ahead, you wanna try it out, but you realize the support is terrible and it's gonna be years before you can finally use it. This used to be a huge problem with JavaScript before things like Babel became popular, but now with CSS, we can use something called post CSS, which allows us to use modern and future CSS today without any weight at all, and it's gonna support every single browser. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what post CSS is, how you can use it, and the best ways to take advantage of these really cool features. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to explain this, we have a very, very simple project here. We just have a really simple index.html with a paragraph and a div and we're importing our style sheet, which our style sheet just changes the text of a few things and the display of our body to grid. Super straightforward, basic stuff. I also have a basic npm package.json I just typed in. npm init, whoops, looks like my console is not working. Let's try that again npm init dash y, hit enter, and that generated the package JSON for me. Now to get started with post CSS, all we need to do is install it. We can say npm i dash dash save dev post CSS, and that's going to install post CSS for us. But in order to use it with the command line, which is the first way I'm gonna show you how to do this, we also need the post CSS CLI to be installed as well. So once both of those are installed, we now have access to post CSS. That is if I spell post CSS CLI correctly, once I do that, it'll install everything and we can start using them and you'll see them show up inside of my dependencies here. And the whole idea behind post CSS is it's very similar to something like SAS or less, where it's gonna take your CSS code, transpile it and compile it into you know other CSS code. But the difference between SAS and less and post CSS is post CSS is more of a transpiler. It works like Babel, where you write normal CSS like this, and all it does is it takes it and it modifies it to make it work with older browsers or based on other plugins that you want to install. So you install different plugins to do different things with your post CSS. By default, all it does is transform, you know, your basic CSS into a different location, but with all the different plugins, it allows you to do a lot of really cool additional things. So if we want to start using post CSS with the CLI, what we can do is we can just create a really simple command here. We can call it whatever we want. I'm just going to call this build CSS. Oops, build, and we'll do build colon CSS, just like that. And what this is going to do is it's going to run our command post CSS. That's going to be running our CLI. And what we want to do is we want to take our styles.css, which is in our source slash styles.css, and then to determine where we want to output this to, we can pass in dash dash dir. That stands for directory. That's where the output of this is going to be. And I'm just going to call this desk. That's like our destination file or our final version of our code. So if we give this a quick save here and I run npm run build colon CSS and I just hit enter, What's going to happen is post CSS is gonna run, it creates that dest folder and it compiles my CSS. And as you can see, my CSS is exactly the same between these two and that's because we don't have anything happening at all. So that's why they look exactly the same minus this comment down here, which is just for source mapping purposes. Now the important thing is when you're using post CSS, you wanna make sure when you import your CSS that you're importing from the destination, wherever you're compiling your CSS to, that's where you want to be importing from. So now you can see my site is still working exactly the same because it's now importing this CSS file instead of the source file here. But if I change this to red, for example, and save, you'll notice it doesn't update. The reason for that is we need to rerun this build command. But it's kind of a pain to have to rerun our build command every time we make changes, which is why you can pass in this dash dash watch or just dash w, and that's going to watch for changes. So now let's just come down here. I'm going to copy this down. I'm going to remove the watch on this first one. And in the second one, I'm gonna call this watch CSS. So now if we run watch CSS, what's gonna happen is it's gonna do the same thing our build would do, but it's going to watch for changes. So every single time I change this source file, for example, I change this back to blue, it's going to see that it's gonna recompile my code and then my live server's automatically updating, which is ideal. So now how do we go about using different plugins to actually use post CSS? Well, one way to do that is I could add some configuration in my package JSON, but this is cumbersome and really not the best place to do that which is why I recommend just creating a postcss.config.js file. This is a JavaScript file we can use to set up all the configurations for postcss. Now, in order to figure out the best way to set up this config file, we can go over here to view all the different plugins. This is just the postcss website. If we click on plugins, that's going to bring us to postcss.parts. I'll link this in the description for you. But this is essentially a place we can search for all different plugins that we want. For example, if we want to have like a minifier, we can just search for like minify. And you can see we have like minify selectors, for example, or there's one called like CSS Nano. And that's just going to be, you know, minifying your code for you. And you can see like how many stars he has. This one has 4,200. 
if I search for that Minify one that has zero stars, so I probably want to go with this CSS Nano one. So if I just click on that real quick, you can see it brings me to the GitHub page for that, and it'll tell me, you know, some information about this different thing. And it can maybe, you know, say, okay, how do I use this? Here's an installation guide, for example, and it tells me exactly how to do that. I need to install CSS Nano, and then I need to add it into my config like this. So let's do that real quick. Over here, we're just going to say npm i dash dash save dev CSS Nano. And the important thing is you only ever need to save these dependencies as dev dependencies. The reason for that is all of this happens as you're developing. And then when you build out your site, you can push it up to your production app. It doesn't need to care about post CSS at all because you just have your CSS like this. So now what we can do is I'm just going to copy this exact config right here. I'm going to paste it down. And if we just you know minimize this and look at our actual config, we can see exactly what's happening. We're requiring the CSS Nano library. What I like to do instead of requiring it in line is we can just say like CSS Nano up here is equal to requiring that library and then call CSS Nano. It makes it a little bit easier to understand what's happening. But essentially, we're importing the CSS Nano library and then it's a function which we can call and we can pass different options. For example, here we set the preset to default. That's all that this code right here is doing. And if we just do a control space, you can see we have different things like a config file and more plugins for CSS Nano that we can change if we need to. Right now, we're just changing this preset value that's perfectly fine and setting it to a default. So now if we just go back to our other you know, terminal here and we reset this command. Anytime you make a change to your config, you need to make sure you reset your watch command. Now what's going to happen is our CSS is going to be minified. You see our output hasn't changed at all. I refresh. It's exactly the same. But our CSS over here is minified. As you can see, it's as small as humanly possible, which is great when you want to push this to a production ready site. It's going to make your CSS as small as possible. Now what happens though if you want to use some like modern CSS features like nesting? We can come to our CSS here. This is our source CSS right here. And if I want to nest this p tag inside my body, I could do that like this. This code right here is exactly the same as my previous code. And it's going to do nesting. You can see we have some errors because the syntax is very, very new. It's not available in any browser at all. But essentially, if I save, you can see that this is now incorrect because our CSS no longer works. And that's because we don't actually know how to access the CSS code. It's not available in any browser at all. But with post CSS, we can use plugins to make this something that's possible. So if we go back over to our plugins here, let's just go back to where we were with our plugins. Instead of searching for a minifier, what I want to search for is ENV. And there's this thing called preset ENV. And this essentially compiles together a bunch of different things, a bunch of different plugins for handling CSS based on what stage it is. So essentially what that means, if we scroll down here a little ways, we can find this section on stage and CSS is broken into stages from zero to four, where stage zero is like super experimental CSS stuff that may not even make it into CSS. While stage four is stuff that is in the CSS specifications, it's not going to change at all. By default, this preset ENV uses stage two features, which are features that are most likely going to make it to CSS and most likely won't change much. So it's fairly safe to use this, but you can change the stage to whatever you want. So we're going to be installing this library here. So let's just come in here. We can say npm i dash dash save dev. And if we look for what this thing is called when we install it, it should be up here at the top, post CSS preset ENV. Most post CSS plugins are going to start with post CSS dash whatever they are, in our case, preset ENV. And we just need to make sure that we import that. So we're going to import that up here with our require statement, get our preset ENV. And we're just going to call that as a function as our next plugin. And we're going to pass it our stage here, which is going to be stage one. The reason for that is because this nesting code that I'm using right here is currently stage one. When you're watching this video, it may be stage two. It may be stage one. It may never even get implemented in CSS, but for now it's in stage one. So if we give that a quick save, we can come back into our code, reset our watch statement to get those new changes. And now if we look at our destination, you'll notice our code has been converted to something that can actually be understood by the browser, and you can see everything is working just fine. So I have nested code inside of my normal CSS here that I wrote, which is future CSS not supported in any browsers at all currently, but my output code is code that is understandable by any browser at all. That's the real power here of post CSS. You can do other things like auto prefixing and so on. There's tons of different plugins you can use. And that's what really makes post CSS so nice because it can take code, any code at all. And based on plugins, it can transform that to anything you want. And you can even write your own plugins. Now doing all of this manually though, is a bit of a pain having to make sure that we write out all of our commands for watching and building our CSS, the source folder, destination folder. It's a bit of a headache, a bit of a pain, which is why pretty much any modern day framework that is going to handle all of your bundling for you, something like Vite, Snowpack, parcel all of those are going to have support for post css built in and if they don't the actual process of adding in support for post css is usually incredibly easy 
So what we can do is we can just close out of this and I want to run npm create Vite at latest and that's going to create me a Vite application. And this Vite application already has post CSS support built in. We're just going to call this Vite. We're just going to use vanilla JavaScript as basic as it can get. So we're going to CD into that Vite folder and PMI. And if we open up that folder, you can see we have all of this code inside of here. I'm going to remove essentially everything from our old project. I'm just going to copy it over. So our index.html, I'm going to copy over. I'm going to get rid of all of these generated files that we don't actually need, just like that. I'm going to take our post CSS config, paste it into here, and I'm going to take our styles inside our source folder. I'm going to paste it into here. I'm going to get rid of everything else that we don't need, just like that. And what I want to do is I want to copy these post CSS dev dependencies that we have. I'm going to put them into my package JSON for my Vite project. Essentially, this is emulating if I had installed these actual dependencies inside of my Vite project instead of somewhere else. So with that done, we can delete all of this other code that we don't need, just like this. And I'm going to copy over, or I've already copied that over, so there we go. So now we essentially have removed everything, just ignore this node modules, it's not doing anything at all for us. So now we have our index HTML, and we have our styles CSS right here, which we don't need, sorry. We have our styles.css right here. So if we just do npm start, that's going to start up our application. I'm sorry, it's npm run dev, not start. That's going to start up our application. And if we open this up, give this a quick refresh, you'll see that we have our paragraph and our div showing up. Now they are not styled correctly, and that's because if we look at our index.html, we're importing from this destination. Well, in our case, we can just import directly from our source where our file is defined, and you can see that's going to do it for us. But we're getting a new error. And the reason for that is Vite and most other bundlers you're gonna use are using ES modules. They're not using this common module syntax of require, they're using import syntax instead. So to get around this, we can just say import CSS Nano, from CSS Nano, just like that. And now that's going to replace our require here. We can do the same exact thing here for this post CSS process or preset ENV. And now when we give that a save and a quick refresh, you'll see it's still not quite working. And that's because module.exports should be replaced with export default. And this is just converting from common modules to ES6 modules. And like I said, almost everything is gonna be using ES6 modules. So now if I do a refresh, you'll see it's still not working. All we need to do is just close out and rerun our server because we changed our config files. Anytime you change your config files, you need to restart your server and boom, there you go. It is now working and is recompiling all our code. But you notice we don't have to worry about any destination folders. We don't have to worry about importing from this destination. It does all of that automatically for us behind the scenes based on this config file right here. So if you're using any type of bundler, for example, Vite, Snowpack, Parcel, doesn't really matter. All you need to do is just add a postcss.config.js file, import the different plugins you need, put the code inside of here that you want, and it should just work automatically. And if it doesn't, I guarantee you the steps to make it work are probably incredibly simple and going to be laid out on the actual website for PostCSS or the website for the bundler that you're using. The real powerful thing about PostCSS though is that it's not changing what you're doing. You're still writing just plain, normal CSS. You're not using SAS, which is like some weird CSS hybrid. This is just normal, plain CSS. And that's what I love so much about it. And you can customize it however you want with whatever plugins you want. And you can even make your own plugins rather easily. So I really like the customization of it and the fact that you're just writing normal CSS at the end of the day. So when things like nesting become a normal CSS feature, you don't have to worry about, you know, changing all your code to have nesting, or you don't have to worry about SAS now having nesting that's different than the CSS nesting. You can just, you know, go ahead, remove this CSS that's doing your nesting in your post CSS config, and now it's going to work just fine. Or it really doesn't matter because the way that post CSS works, it's smart enough to know that, okay, once 100% of browsers or like 99% of browsers or whatever cutoff you set support some given feature, it's not actually going to change your code at all. It's just going to leave your CSS exactly as it is, which is another point in favor of post CSS. So 10 years down the road, when this nested format is standard across all browsers, post CSS isn't going to change it. It's just going to leave it as is, which is great for making sure that your CSS works exactly as you expect. And it's always shipping the least amount of CSS possible. And that's all there is to post CSS. It's really as simple as just creating a config file and adding some values to it. Now, if you want to learn more about some cutting edge CSS you can use in post CSS, I'm going to have videos on those linked right over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.